What's up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, I want to show you a C++ example of the factory pattern and how a junior would write it versus how a senior developer would write it. So as you guys can see here, I have really two things. I have a factory and I have a set of images. I have a JPEG and a PNG image that both inherit from the base image class. And currently I'm writing the factory method as a junior developer would write it. So I have type equals PNG, type equals JPEG, and then I have my final else return null pointer branch. Now, what I want to highlight about this approach is, while it does look clean initially, it's oftentimes too long, especially if you have hundreds, if not thousands, of different structs that all inherit from image. So how would I change this, or how would a senior developer write something like this? Well, they would write it actually using a map. And they wouldn't need to then duplicate the if else, if else, if else, if else code, because effectively they'd be able to write one or two, actually three lines of code rather, that would index into the map that contains the actual factory implementation of these types, and then they would simply return it. There's no getting around actually having to write the make unique and having it done in a clean way, but there is a way to get around the constant if else, if else, if else branches. What I could have also done here is instead of putting this map in method scope, I could have put it in class scope. So declared it as a data member of the class itself, but then I'd also have to actually write the map outside of the class unless I declared it inline, which I could have done. In general, for the simplicity of this example, I decided to put it in function scope. I could have had type info replaced with string view. In other words, I could have just kept string view as the key to this map instead of adding type info as a parameter to this create method. The reason I like type info better is due to it being less error prone. What do I mean by that? Well, if I actually use a string view, for example, I'm depending on the actual developer to type that character out correctly. Whereas when I use type info, I have the advent of autocomplete. I also have the advent of replace. So I can rename that given struct, JPEG for example, and have that propagate to all references to JPEG in my code. I couldn't do that if I just used a string literal.